Hi, and welcome to another Spencer Dupre Blender tutorial. I am Spencer Dupre. Today I'm going to show you about a great new feature for the game engine called Navigation Meshes. This feature is not present in the official versions of Blender yet, but you can find builds of it at graphicall.org. I'll put a link in the description. And these features should be present in uh, the 2.61 release, which should happen in no more than a couple weeks from now. This feature will help us make our AIs a lot more intelligent, and I'll show you how. So first, I'm going to create sort of a terrain for our characters to move around on. I'm going to create a plane, and then scale it up a bit. And I'm going to subdivide this several times. And then I'm going to select a few of the faces here in the middle. Uh, not quite so many. I'm going to extrude them up and make sort of a wall here. And also, I'm going to make a little sloped region, a little platform that our characters can go up. Uh huh, went the wrong way there. Okay. Alright, so we have our little platform and we have our main area. I'm going to make this green, create a new material for it. Okay. And I'm going to position the camera so we can see the whole thing, so I'm going to press G to grab it and then click with the middle mouse button and zoom it out. So I think we'll use a cube for our main character. I'm going to create a cube and then press G to grab and shift Z to move it on all axes except for the Z axis. I'm going to put him right about there. Move him up on the z-axis a bit and go into edit mode and scale him down by about 0.5. The reason I scale him in edit mode instead of object mode is uh, because if you scale him in object mode then you have that scaling information saved. Whereas if you scale in edit mode that just becomes part of the mesh. We're going to make our little character here blue. And the reason he's blue is because he's very sad because he has not yet reached his target, which is this UV sphere. And like all good targets, we're going to make it red and not so shiny. Smooth that a bit. Okay. Now if we want our blue cube here to make it over to this red sphere, how are we going to do that? Well, first I need to change the render mode into Blender Game. And I'm going to adjust our cube character a little bit. I'm going to go into his physics uh, settings and change it to dynamic, which automatically sets him to an actor. And we'll see here that the radius is bigger than the actual mesh. That's because the mesh is 0.5 blender units in all directions, and the radius was set to 1. So if we shrink it down to 0.5, then it'll fit. And if we press P, our cube rests there. If we grab our cube, and pull him up on the z-axis a little bit and press P, he falls down and lands there. So that's great. Now I'm going to change the view to game logic and then change the 3D view back to camera. And now we're going to add some logic bricks for our cube. So I'm going to add an always sensor and an and controller and a steering actuator. Now the steering actuator is the new uh, GUI piece that you'll see in this uh, this whole nav mesh thing. So if we set our target object to sphere and don't set a navigation mesh yet and press P we see our cube tries to reach the sphere but he hits the wall and he just smacks his nose right against it. If we bump up his velocity a little bit ooh, that looked painful. So how do we get him teach him to go around? without writing a whole bunch of fancy Python code. Not that I'm dissing writing Python code. You, If you want to make serious games in Blender, you really should learn how to code Python. It's really not that hard, guys. Uh, it, I recommend looking up a book, the, A Bite of Python, by... Oh, I forget the author's name, but I'll put a link in the description. Look up A Bite of Python. Excellent resource. So what we have to do for to generate <clears throat> Sorry, what we have to do is generate a navigation mesh. And we do that here in the scene settings. Uh, just open the navigation mesh panel and select our terrain and click build navigation mesh. 
and we see we get this brilliant uh, rainbow area just so pretty and colorful and that is our nav mesh that is the um, the nav mesh navigation mesh that means that is the area where our character is allowed to navigate he can move anywhere that there are rainbow colors now I have a problem with this nav mesh existing up here on top of the wall but I don't think that's going to be a problem in our case so now if we select our guy and change the navigation field to say nav mesh which is the name of this new object and then if we press P he smacks his face into the wall again well that's because we need to change the behavior type to path following and now if we play it he goes right around that wall and straight to that sphere look at that that's just perfect now what happens if we take this sphere and put it up here on top of this ledge if we put it right about there and we press P he gets there, but you see there's no nav mesh here allowing him to go up onto that ledge. Well, that's because it is too steep. And if we look here in the nav mesh settings, um, under agent, we see a max slope is what that says, I believe. Yeah, max slope, which is 45 degrees. So if we just increase that so that the maximum slope is now, I don't know, 75 degrees, Let's delete the old nav mesh, select our terrain again, and click build nav mesh again. And now we have this wonderful slope going, you know, the nav mesh goes up the slope now. So if we press P, ah, we press P, but nothing happens. Why? Because when we deleted the nav mesh, it disappeared from this section here in the steering actuator. So there we go. Now it works perfectly. Except, if we slow that down a little bit so we can see it more clearly, as our cube goes up, he stays facing perfectly straight up, and his corner digs into that slope. But, if we go down here to the facing area and we check the little N box, N for normal, now he tilts properly as he goes up. Perfect. Turning speed is another one of our settings. So it looks like he kind of freaks out a little bit when he gets there. Um, yeah, there's a few glitches, there's a few bugs. It's, it's definitely not perfect, but it, uh, this, is, this has added a tremendous new feature that we didn't have before in terms of uh, improving our AI. So now you can have your AI characters get from point A to point B uh, without any problem. So this has been a Spencer Dupre tutorial. Check out my website, spencerdupre.org, and I'll see you next time.